This video is supported by the Internet Society in an effort to assist tribal nations with getting their 2.5 gigahertz licensed networks up and running. Hi there. My name is Christopher Mitchell, and I'm the director of the Community Broadband Networks Initiative at the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. Welcome to a series about LTE networks. We're going to explore everything from why LTE networks are, are really great options for broadband deployment to the basics of building and configuring your own LTE network. So I hope you enjoy this series. Now we're going to talk about setting up a core and connecting devices to it. At a really high level, you think about the core, it's sitting there in the middle. It's got an upstream or you know WAN interface to the internet. And the downstream side, they could be the same, right? It could just be on the public internet, and this is the same IP address for both. But um, you know, one side of it, the eNodeB side needs to be reachable by the eNodeB somewhere in your network or in the internet. The and then the upstream side has to be on the internet. Um, this is something you probably, unless you're running your own little box and configuring it correctly, um, with any sort of cloud or embedded stuff, they're already handling this. But I, I felt like it was important to start at the beginning. Um, and so from there. Now you just need to know a couple of, you just actually, it's pretty easy to connect devices. You only need a couple of information. And the first is there's a number called a PLMN and it's a unique, it's either five or six digits. Um, and every mobile network in the world has a unique one. And the idea is this is how you figure out roaming. Your phone's like, hey, are you a Verizon tower? It's like, no, I'm a T-Mobile tower. Like that's how it, that's how these things work in cellular land. Um, but where it really affects uh, your building you know, a small network, a big network, a fixed wireless, whatever it is, is that you need to have the same number in uh, configured in the core, in every e node B, and uh, in your SIM cards. And we're getting to SIM cards a bit later. Um, I keep mentioning them; they keep they keep popping up. When choosing one, it's not super important as long as you're no, you don't step on someone else's feet. And there's not actually that many PLMNs out there. So we, uh, um, so oftentimes what you see is. The hardest part of choosing a PLMN is writing it into your SIM cards. So you're not going to have to do that, but oftentimes you find that when you're getting SIM cards from a vendor, they're going to help you out. So uh, Verizon's got a PLMN 310350. Uh, Bicel's got their own PLMN so that they can sell SIM cards with this already configured. Here's a thing, throw it in your cloud core, go home. Um, I made one up, which is uh, when we started printing our own SIMs, which I'll get to later in this deck. Um, so we chose 91054. So oftentimes the people that are helping you get SIM cards will give you this information and you can kind of key it off of that. So I mentioned this a bit earlier, but for e Bs, both on the radio side and on the core side, they're pretty interchangeable. Um, you'll have to say, and you have, when you're configuring your e B, you got it off out of the box, you're super excited. Uh, you're gonna have to set two main things. You're gonna have to set the PLMN, it's gonna be a field somewhere. And you're gonna have to set the, MM, the IP address of the MME. And this is a classic LTE acronym world. The MME is a specific component in the EPC. So don't worry about it. Just the core, that's the IP address of the core is what you're going to point the e node B to. Um, once you set these values, you might also have to do some network configuration. If you know you log into the, the e node B and you're kind of like, hey, what's your IP address? Do you want it to be fixed? Do you need it to be DHCP? We talked about all these things. So this basic network config, then there's these two main values, which you have to set for LTE. And then that's that's it. And you should be able to reboot it. It should come online. Um, you'll be able to look at the logs, make sure it's attached, and do this before you start futzing around with users and SIM cards and stuff. And so I've got some screenshots here that hopefully demystify this. So this is a, this unit we bought from Blink Networks. It's an eNodeB. It's actually three eNodeBs in one. And if you look over here on the left, there's the dashboard, which we remember when we were talking about Ubiquity gear. There's a setup which has like, and the system is like network addresses and IP addresses and just the very basic stuff. And then there's an LTE section. You go to LTE and there's a lot of this, which is kind of radio stuff on the left. You know, most of that stuff is good out of the gates. So you can tweak it if you want to play with it, but we're going to ignore it. And then over here on the right, we've got EPC settings and there's two in there, exactly what I mentioned. You just need the PLMN and you'll see there's a use embedded EPC button that is disabled because we did not pay them for it because we're using our own. And in this network, the address is 10, 10, 10, 1. We set it. And uh, with this device, you always have to reboot it after you change anything. 
And uh, that, that was that. It was not incredibly painful. We already had our core set up and this is all we had to do to connect any node B. Same on the buy cells. You'll notice both of these, uh, this UI is a little bit uglier, I think personally. And it's a bit, it's a bit less straightforward. You try to X out a thing and it's like, no, are you sure? It's, but same basic stuff. You've got a lot of stuff up here. RF status, power modify, so that's kind of radio centric. And you go down a little bit more in the main screen, the main option screen, and you find these two fields right here. We've got the PLMN, you can see my 91054, the MME IP, see that same 10, 10, 10, 1. For some reason, their system makes you pair the MME IP to the PLMN, but I don't understand what they're doing, but we got them both set. It took a little bit of convolutedness, and uh, then the rest of it, you look at everything else on the screen, and it's kind of hardcore radio parameters. It's, you know, preferred power, frequency, this kind of stuff. Um, so we added these things and now we're going to like kind of make sure that they're doing all right. And here's a screenshot of PyCell's cloud core. There's a list of the enode Bs. If you click on that little radio blue square on the left, and then there's an, you know, for all these different enode Bs, you scroll to the right and there's an MME status and it's green when it's connected and it's red when it's not. So that log looks good. Hey, it's talking to an MME, you know, which is the same as talking to the core. I should, I should try to reiterate that Ac acronym soup gets hard and, and I apologize. Um, here's that blink box again. We just went to the main dashboard and there's a thing at S1 MME connected. Hey, great. Yeah. We're, so, you know, there's a lot of information here, but when you start looking for a couple of key things, they pop out and they're easy to find because they know that this is the number one thing you're going to be poking. <laughs>